Hey, hello, howdy, how you doing? I know this doesn't fit my current content, but my buddy showed me this game and I felt a compulsive need to share it with you in hopes of getting it some more recognition. So what is Skur Ritual? Well, the best way I can describe it is Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombies, but without the pay-to-win gobble gums. In the simplest way to put it, it's a round-based survival game, and it's got everything you'd want with an off-brand pack-a-punch, steampunk weapons, Celtic God superpowers, and waves of the undead, or quiet ones as they're called, and no, not the ones who tend to hang out in the back of class who told you not to come to school tomorrow. These ones don't have guns. They wield axes and sights and other cool shit like that. Alright, so it's another round-based survival game. What's different with it? Well, did you even pay attention to what I just said? There's steampunk weapons to use, perks to buy, Celtic god powers to unlock as a form of progression. They're also called miracles. Real quick, miracles are my favorite part of the game. It adds a roguelike element where you're presented with three random choices and can choose one for each slot. So you can have one for your throwable, one for melee, one for your ultimate ability, and so on. Just look at some of these real quick. For each ability you pick, they can also be upgraded each time you earn a miracle point. Just a really cool feature and one that I really enjoyed. If that isn't enough, there's also these orbs that you can get to unlock permanent upgrades such as increased health, fire rate, damage, and reload speed for each of the perks. On top of that, there's four maps available, at least at the time of recording this, and they're all available with just the base game. None of that $15 per map bullshit. Each map has unique hostiles in the game too, like you've got your standard quiet ones, but for example in the map Ashes of Skur Hotel, you get these electrical guys that shoot shit at you. There's also these big brute fire guys that detonate when killed. Along with that, each map comes with its own unique wonder weapon, which you'll see in the video since they're crucial to finishing the easter eggs. In terms of progression and unlockables, there's a free battle pass styled unlock system where you can get a ton of free cosmetics such as masks, music, backgrounds, and way more that I'm forgetting at the moment. My favorite part of all of this is the voice lines you can unlock. Some of my personal favorites include... Cheesh! Or... Bruh, 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 bruh. And finally, who could forget... Let's go! But there's literally hundreds to choose from, and it's just something that me and my friends had a ton of fun messing around with in-game. Look, it's no secret that, like most of you, I grew up on COD Zombies. I talk about it all the time, and to say it's influenced my childhood and exposure to video games is a drastic understatement. Some of my favorite childhood memories with video games are staying up until 4am trying to beat all the COD Zombie easter eggs, or playing Dury split screen with an Xbox controller and trying to get the Bowie knife. So you can imagine my excitement when I found out that each of the four base maps has their own easter eggs to complete. So for a quick recap, four unique maps, four unique easter eggs with an overarching story, and four unique wonder weapons, one for each map. Oh, and there's also a hidden bonus easter egg for each map once you finish the main one, along with a secret wonder weapon that looks to be accessible in each map as well. So in reality, four maps, eight easter eggs, and five wonder weapons. So what's the gameplay like? Well, great question, thanks for asking. To try it out, I teamed up with one of my longtime friends who I've played through every old Call of Duty Zombies map with in an attempt to see what Skur Ritual truly has to offer. And when I say every zombie map, I mean every zombie map by the way. We used to play Kino on the f***ing Wii. Naturally, this wouldn't truly be a That Guy Preds video unless we went completely overboard with it and did all four easter eggs for the four respective maps as a way to showcase the game. So with that, Throw me over onto your second monitor, boot up whatever you're playing right now, probably RuneScape or Fallout if I had to take a guess, and enjoy the chaos of me and my idiot friends struggling through what has been the most enjoyable round-based experience I've had in years. Real quick though, watch me hit this sick 360. First on the list is Cursed Lands of Lavernack. This takes place on a creepy, demonic farm with a Slenderman dude chasing you every few rounds. It's got this decent sized farm area where it's like an Amish town, but the bulk of the map takes place in an underground facility, which just looks incredible. Safeguard, okay, I, I still have no clue what Safeguard does. I think it does reduce damage, that's my, my theory. Here, let him hit me. Oh, never mind. Okay, so there's a slot for your gun, your molotov, your elixir, your knife, your ult, and then there's a, a slot two, and three, and four. There's different tiers. Oh, fuck. Damn. It's Ibrahim. Um, no, Jebediah. We don't have your wagon. Oh. Jump him. Jump him. Yeah, Jump yeah. him. Ah. This is what the 1800s look like, bitch. 
call me Edward Scissorhands for none. So. Uh, okay, so, miracles. So there's one for each of them. So, and it, it'll change, they're random, it's roguelike. So it's a rant. Oh, there's a uh, big guy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's one for each of those. So like, for example, I, my ult is it makes me, I'm invincible for five seconds. Okay, my gun upgrade is it increases damage by 2% and lowers hit enemy damage by 20% for two seconds. I think that's just when I shoot an enemy, they do less damage. Um, so you can get one, like, you remember that there's one for Molotovs that, like, changes it to, like, electrical damage and stuff. So you get those miracles for each slot, and then you can upgrade them every time you get a new miracle. So, like, I just got a new miracle. I can either use one for my elixir, which now does poison, inflict poison that causes tick damage. I can do my knife, or I can upgrade my, my ultimate, which is seven seconds instead of five now. Absolute dog shit. Um, it's power ports again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These things. Apparently, Molotovs just don't do damage to them. Oh, it was Jebediah. <laughs> oh, no. I love how I called that. <laughs> I think this might be the only way we can point. go. Uh, it's over here. Let's run Is straight it? through the cornfield. We'll be yeah. chained up Children bodies. The corn. Yeah. God damn. Oh. Oh. It's the Fire Nation. No, I bought the MP5. Oh, oh, wait, there's a shotgun over here. Honestly, the MP5 kind of slaps. It's pretty good. I figure I'll probably... I don't know, actually, I don't know. I might I might trade in the revolver. I was thinking... I have no money, by the way. Oh. I would love to see, like, a bank feature uh, where you, or, like, the, where you can give each other money. He's like, yeah. Power room. Okay, here's one of those things for when, when you die, you can buy another coin. Yeah. This is the little token. Can't carry more of that item. Yeah. The entire setup for completing the Easter egg revolves around collecting four cylinders. Each cylinder has their own little set of quests to complete, which you'll see in just a few moments. Once those are collected, there's a few extra steps to bring everything together before the boss battle. We started with the Hero Cylinder, which involves using the furnace down in the morgue. First, you need to stand in a zone to open it up. I don't know if they have to be in it, or if we just have to be in it. Let me see. Once that's completed, you have to get the firebenders to get the coals hot before collecting entrails to use as fuel. Then put it in. Oh, it's wait. Like oh, no, no. We, we, you know, we got to use the, the fire dudes. And they have to shoot fire into it. I'll try to run back in. There we go. Shoot. There we go. Alright. Uh, he's green. Right over there, I think. Yeah. Oh god, he's got range. Oh. Fucking Steph Curry, Jesus Christ. Alright, he's like one more. Don't hit. Alright, I'm gonna see if he'll just, uh. There we go. Oh, now nah, we gotta get the, the parts. Yeah. I don't know if we have to be like in here to collect the parts, but also I, I feel so. like they're just Might gonna as well be, be though. Yeah, I was gonna say they're gonna be around here anyway. The entrails. Once all of those steps are completed, you can walk over and collect the first cylinder. 
It's worth noting that there's no set way to get these challenges done. They can be completed in any order at any time, or not at all if you just want to go for high rounds. The Medusa Cylinder introduces the Wonder Weapon, but before we get into that, we've got to deal with five Banshees, which, after starting this challenge, begin spawning in with all the other cult members. Where are you? There you are. Nope. There we go. Alright. Oh, it's not the Tempest. It's the Thunderbolt. Do you need to uh, hold a zombie for anything right now? Um, actually, yeah. That would be great. After picking up the Thunderbolt, you're tasked with shooting the four metal scarecrows around the farmlands. These can be recognized by the glowing blue dots on their corpses. A little hard to see when you're fighting for your life, but if you've got your own Venom the Sage to hold the last zombie for you, it can be completed fairly easily. Once you shoot the four zombies, you'll need to head back down into the facility to shoot the electric cages with the Thunderbolt. Even though you're told to use the Thunderbolt, it doesn't really matter what weapon you use. So if you've got an LMG, for example, i just use that and get the task done much faster. With the Medusa Cylinder collected, it's onto the third challenge, which subsequently was my least favorite of the playthrough. Within the living quarters, there's a set of pictures with a number and picture on them. These correspond with a lock combination that you need to find and enter them in at. The biggest holdup is that you need an old RGB lantern to find it that you hit in combination with, and while you're holding it, you can't use any weapons. Okay, I think it's just the pictures. Is creepy Jesus guy. Or is also creepy Jesus guy. On the bright side, the combination isn't all that hard to find. I have no idea where the third picture is, but I found one, two, and four, so all I needed to do was put those portions in, and then just spin the third dial until the vault unlocked. Alright, I got three of the four, and I think I just did the same. I don't know where the, the third puzzle piece is, like the third picture. So I've just been spinning the bookshelf on that third one. I did this last time, too. It's like, you know, three of the four, it's gonna be, and you can just spin it until you get the right one. All that's left now is the Cerberus Cylinder, which is a two-parter. Unfortunately, it's across the entire map, which is massive. Oh, and after like round 15, these invisible dudes start spawning in, and they're a huge pain in the ass to oh, deal fuck, with. Oh fuck, the invisible guys are here. Just noticed one. Wait, I have to reload. Oh, ammo. Give me my ammo ammo. What if I offered you a safeguard in return? Anyway, once you make it to the shrine, you're tasked with destroying the four statues in the woodlands. It's important to note that you can only destroy one specific statue at a time, and it changes every few seconds. But just finding and shooting any statue isn't gonna work. You need to wait for it to start glowing first, which is the indicator that you're at the correct one. Only one of these statues can be destroyed at a time, and you don't know it until you shoot them. Like, you can't just go to a random one and shoot it. It has to be one at a time. Increase fire rate. Um, in our spawn, I think. Gotcha. After destroying all four statues, you need to spin them to match the corresponding symbol on the shrine. It's a pretty simple puzzle, and they do get a bit more advanced than the other maps, but I really appreciate all the different tasks and puzzles you've got to complete on the first map. It really helps set the tone for what Skur Ritual brings to the table. One are you? 
Once you've matched up all four statues, the shrine opens up to reveal a little lamb needing to be escorted back to the starting room. You wanna help me escort the, the lamb? Lamb? I can't even find my way back to the surface now. <laughs> Alright, I shall escort the lamb. Back in the back in the snare room. Nice, I did it. Very proud. It took a whole two rounds. <laughs> Wait, you're actually right next to me. Come here, come here, come here. Hi. Wait, stay here. You can help me guide the lamb. But oh, we forgot it. It's back here. Hold on. He's just kind of hanging out. You gotta go this way. There he goes. Be free, my friend. Once the lamb is safely back in its box, you need to kill enemies within the radius to extract their essence. Alright, we're doing much better because last time we did this, I was trying to do this one alone on like round 35, if you remember, and I had just the revolver. It was like tier 1. Ooh. If we can finish this uh, while the triple points is active, we should get a shit ton of points for that. By the Making way. Time. Oh, that's that's a uh, half off. It's not triple points. Oh, well now I feel really dumb. You should. Ah! I just, I literally just bought ammo. I, I literally just bought it. Can I shoot while drinking? No. I need to reload speed. Uh, in the library. If you go back this way, it's there eventually. Okay. Thank you. I might not know how to get there, but I know where you I know came where from. You know where it is. <laughs> With all four cylinders collected, you can place them at an altar in the upgrade room. Upon doing so, you'll be told the main power source has failed and you need to fuel the backup generator. Basically, what you need to do is stand inside this tiny ring and light up the quiet ones, using their essence to power the vault doors. It's one of the more difficult challenges in the easter egg, but if you do it solo while your partner runs around the map, it's just so much easier. Playing for my life, dog. Build up. Oh, points. The Banshees are back! Oh, Serpentine! Uh, Serpentine! Anything. Safeguard! Now I feel safe and guard. It's like having the neighborhood watch live next to you. Thanks, neighborhood watch. You're totally made up of cool people who weren't bullied in elementary school. <laughs> Facts. It's everyone who didn't get picked as line leader <laughs> joins the... <laughs> I was gonna say it's all the cops who didn't make the force. <laughs> Why be a small cop security guard when you could be part of your local neighborhood watch? Hiya! Make sure that the grass is up to key, okay? Yeah, oh, I swear to God if that garage door is open. <laughs> With the doors now open, all that's left to do is shoot some power coils. I'm blowing it up. Infinite ammo! You're supposed to shoot the, the core thing? Yeah, or what yeah, supposed yeah. To shoot? No, these these little... those things. Mm, gotcha. <laughs> like oh, we just, don't. oh, no more infinite ammo, shit. 
Uh, last one's right here. Doing so opens a chamber door, which leads to the boss battle with Abraham, who's basically just the Amish version of Slenderman. He's the guy that's been popping up every couple rounds, similar to George Romero in Call of the Dead. No, it doesn't put us in an instance. Oh, well, that's horrifying. It starts up when we shoot him. Remember, he's got the chains, and the yep. I remember the floor becomes like lava or yep, whatever. Yep, floor's lava, floor's lava, floor's lava. Yeah, it cuts into different portions. Where does he go? He's in this corner over here. Floor's changing. Yep, watch out for the landmines. Oh, me. oh he pulled me in, pulled me in. Yep. Go. No. It's almost dead. Here, safeguard. Change, change, oh. change. I wonder if I let him hit me with... Oh, he's dead. We got him. Oh, we did it. Leave level. Or, oh, we got a, another... What is this? An angel thing? Oh, it's an altar. Continue exploring to uncover the mystery of the god killer or use the door to leave the level. This path is unaided. You must solve the quests on your own. There is a more. Post Easter egg, Easter egg. It's like an Easter egg within an Easter egg. I wonder if there's an Easter egg within that. Fuck this, we out. Next up, we've got the Ashes of Skur Hotel. Now, Venom fucking hates this map, and I don't blame him. To be honest, I kind of left him out to die for the majority of the Easter egg. He spent almost the entire hour or so just sitting in the main lobby of the hotel, because anytime he'd venture away from it, he'd end up getting lost. Oh, God. That's, That's horrifying. <laughs> nice mask. Bruh. Thanks. You need to follow him and end are, are you ready? Bruh. That's... Oh! All right, we got. I sacrificed my own life for Pakistan. Oh, I hate. It. Okay, we got to do the cylinders and. Oh, he's right. Hey, we gotta go this way. The hotel is larger than the first map, but it's much more compact with these long hallways, tight corners, and confined spaces. The initial objectives revolve around finding these cylinders, filling them up with a special gas, and then plugging them into these wall ports to charge up the teleporter. It's like off-brand Nova. Here's Nova 6. This is... I don't know. Nova 8. They're all, they're all snuggling. Activate the teleporter platform. Okay. Um, now we gotta find the other canisters, and I think they're just kind of all over the map. Where is... Oh, here we go. Another canister. Run! Shut up. Good job. Now, teabag to assert down. Oh, God. This one's stuck in the wall. Oh, they're all gonna be right here. Every five rounds or so, the power will shut off, and these electric dudes appear similar to dog rounds, only oh, instead of getting a max ammo at the end, no, you'll get nothing, and you'll like yeah. it. Electric Those are electric dudes. guys. I feel like you got this. It's Ezekiel! It was around this time that we were introduced to the second boss in the series. He may look like Abraham, but his name is Isaac, and holy shit is he annoying. Either Isaac or Ezekiel, I think. Oh, it's one of those two. I'm out of ammo! God, I can't see. Don't die! I your eyes. I died. Oh, I, can I, I got you on the res. Hold on. 
Never mind, no I don't. Wait, They're I safeguard over here. They're safeguard. They're safeguard. He needs to leave. No, 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 no. Come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> Hell yeah. He just let me do oh. that. Hi -ya. I was fucking with my miracles. All right, I'm gonna go use the bathroom. You have fun with that. Oh my god. <laughs> I believe in you. I'll hold the line. And I'm not dead. Uh, I held I held my ground. <laughs> You're an OG. With Venom back, I was able to find the remaining canisters and complete a trial, which I'm just now realizing I didn't show on the first map. So trials pop up every five to ten rounds or so, and they come in several different forms, but they all boil down to the fact that you have a set amount of time to stop something. Whether it's destroying this contraption or collecting essence in a zone. Failing to do so can spawn in these massive abominations, turn the enemies into super sprinters and other shit like that. They're not mandatory, but they can be a massive pain in the ass if you don't deal with them right away. With the canisters placed, you can interact with the teleporter, which brings you to the first floor library, unlocking my favorite wonder weapon in the game, the Howler. Go to the teleporter real quick. Get, get, get over here, oh get over God. here, get over here. <laughs> Get the, get the jug! Get, no, get back to the like teleporter! Pressing buttons. Run! Get back to the teleporter! Oh wait, we can't. Oh it. fuck, alright. Um, oh, we gotta kill them all, that's why. Hold on. Ah, oh, the motherfuckers, bro. Kill the electrical, guys. Uh, you should be able to go back through now. There's still some in here. Oh, it said to kill the electrical guys. Acquire the howler. Oh. Hold on. Here we go. This thing fucks. It's a shotgun that fires a massive plasma ball that just kind of bounces around all over the room, dealing bonus damage each time it hits an enemy the perfect weapon for close quarters. Imagine a shotgun that can hit a zombie 20 times in a few seconds. That's what this bad boy offers in close quarters. Oh, if you're wondering what those abominations from failed trials look like, here you go. Now that I've got the Howler, I need to wait until the power goes out so I can find and enter two separate codes, so we just kind of burnt through the next several rounds. Okay. Perfect. Um, Alright, let me go this way. And kind of hope they all just go to you. The codes are really simple. All you need to do is find the number layout on the walls and then shoot the numbers on the little heads in that order. Two, three, one, four. Three, one, four. All right. Four, two, one, three. Three. Activate the teleport navigation system. Remember how I said at the beginning that Venom just kind of got left to deal with all the zombies while I did the silly little puzzles and stuff? Well, this is what I was talking about. Poor man was out here fighting for his life while I was shooting numbers into walls. 
Anyway, while he's out here doing God's work, I was trying to find three separate punch cards. Entering those codes unlocks the nav system, which opens up an additional four rooms to teleport to. Three of those rooms being the theater, the labyrinth, and the void, with the fourth being the boss battle at the end. I started with the theater since it's the easiest to do. Once you teleport, you summon a Five Nights at Freddy's character, but this one's the Chuck E. Cheese version who didn't make the cut. There's five separate rats scattered throughout the hotel that you need to find and grab a part from. Um, I don't know. Uh, at the very top of the balcony, in the main room. There we go. Well, just sold out for that. <laughs> yeah. After collecting all five and placing them on the methed out Chuck E. Cheese, you'll need to collect energy from the electric enemies in order to charge up the theater room, after which he'll spit out the first punch card. Half price would be amazing. There we go. Now I can only imagine how difficult the second one would be if you're doing it solo. The labyrinth is just that, a giant maze you need to navigate, only there's a twist. Instead of finding a way out, you'll need to escort a goat to these cloning chambers, slowly amassing an army of goats. I have no idea why you need to clone the goats, but I think I'm pretty sure this makes me their god now. Hello. Come on, my children. Oh, it's glorious. We have four. I am Goatman. Come on, my children. I'll keep you safe. On with the platform. Get the punch card. Goodbye, my children. The last punch card comes from the void. This is what it looks like. All you need to do is sit in this tiny little circle and get kills. Simple enough, really. Except you can't fucking see anything. This is... Advanced Darkness. Hope no one is prone to seizures. Oh fuck, I'm almost dead, hold on. Oh, there's a lot of them. Oh, there's a lot of them. Pop my ult. Probably do that too. Did I do it? Oh, I did. I'll run away for a little bit. Oh god. Come on. There we go. After collecting the final punch card, you can place all of them in the nav system, which unlocks the boss fight with Isaac. Unlike the boss fight with Abraham, Isaac takes place in a small, confined room. The hardest part was simply dodging all of the electrical abilities he spams. While that's going on, enemies are spawning in on top of you, and some of the rooms just start leaking that purple gas into them. It's just pure chaos the entire time. Alright, I tried to melt him. Yeah, be yes, careful for the gas yes. chambers. Too. Yep. Pop this now. Oh, uh, uh be careful, yeah, because he's got the thing the yep. yep. Oh, 
Poison again, poison. And electric. Triple points, triple points. Oh, electric, yep. Yep. Oh, fuck. Uh, I'm almost dead. Just stuck in the oh, I got him. Really? You might have got him. Bro. We did it. Oh, well, let's go. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. I get out of here. Boom. The third map, Sewers of the Dead, is the first to feature a mini-boss about halfway through the easter egg. The wonder weapon is, in my opinion, the worst of the four, but it's necessary to complete the easter egg so it limits you to one legit gun. With that, we got off to a hot start when I couldn't look around. Oh my god, we're in Tammy Slayton's stomach. Uh oh, I can't move my mouse. Hold on. I can't turn. I can't turn! Good. I can't turn. <laughs> Help! Let's go backwards. Put your hand against the I, uh, <laughs> back against the wall. I can make our stand. Like an arena. Hold on. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> like after about 15 minutes of restarting, I eventually just rebooted the game, and we managed to get everything working correctly. You're alive. Good. Thank God. Okay. It's fixed. It's fixed. We're fixed. I'm gonna make the same joke again because we already made it. Oh my god, we're in Tammy Slayton's mouth or stomach. I, fu I fucked it up. It's not the same. Quit. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Re restart. It's done. Vibes right, are off. Restart it for the fucking 80th 80, 80 time. <laughs> Vibes are off. Vibes are off. So, as you clearly heard, you start out in Tammy Slayton's colon. This map features these blocked artery things that you need to destroy by hitting the yellow rat nests. The map layout kind of takes place in the sewers and on a train, which is a huge change of pace coming from the hotel. Progressing through the train will lead you to the plague, this map's wonder weapon. I will say, it kinda sucks, but much like the previous two, it's vital to complete in the easter egg. It's just an electric guy, like oh, Isaac. Oh, bam! This is kinda cool. Use the plague to destroy the shelled pods to access the radio tower. Out of the way, stupid. Basically, there is a shit ton of pods blocking key portions of the map. You need to shoot them with the plague pistol and then destroy the nest underneath them. That's only one portion of it, though. There's also these spots in the sewers infested with rats that you need to shoot to disperse. This unlocks places like the pack a punch room and different tunnel paths and shortcuts. Ew, there's like rats. Do I shoot the rats? Oh, that's dope. There's like traps on the ground. Interesting gun you got. Yeah, watch. Come here. There's rats right there. Back. Yeah. And you can you shoot them and it clears them out. Oh. Huh. With the map opened up, you need to clear out the central chamber below the radio tower. It's the same premise as shooting all the nests like we've been doing, but the chamber is multiple floors with single space stairs, making it incredibly easy to get trapped by enemies. They got. Is that not the shotgun? That RS10, right? No. I think I just bought a second one. I don't know what the fuck I did. Got two of them now. I thought it was the double barrel. You got double up on shot my guns. All these. Cause that's a lot. Oh fuck. Oh, Ammo shit. up here if you need. Once the eight nests are destroyed, you're tasked with obtaining all four chamber keys to open the central chamber. If you're still not catching on, that unlocks the boss battle for the map. 
Harvey Weinstein also makes a guest appearance, popping in every once in a while to see what you're up to. Just don't let him slip you the old hot Cosby, and he's pretty easy to deal with. Anyway, the first challenge is to head to the radio tower and shoot the targets in the sequence shown on each panel. Simple enough. There we go. Red, green, green, blue, red, red. We got one of the keys behind you. We did it. For the second key, you need to find some luggage down in the sewers. This gun is so that on. Oh, ass, dude. Oh my god, it's Terry. <laughs> Not Terry. Here you go. Put it in Put reverse, in reverse. Terry. <laughs> Poor Terry. Is it this one? No. Is it. Looking back, it's pretty obvious that the case you're looking for is the bright white one sitting in the light. Once you open it, you'll find four tarot cards that you'll need to remember the order of. The code, what's, I'm gonna hit the box real quick. I, I sure the hunting rifle's gotta be better than this. Oh, the fucking pickaxe? And then the bot, and then he ran away. Well, I have a pickaxe now. Sorry, what is it? A pioneer's axe, not a pickaxe. Difference. Back on the train, there's this side room with a combination lock. Inputting the tarot cards in order unlocks the door, revealing the second key. Uh, uh, lady. Another lady. And... Walker, Texas Ranger. There we go. That's lucky. You might be able to help. Did you? Where, where's Lucky? Top. Right in the tower. For the third key, you'll need to escort a helmet-wearing quiet one all the way across the map to a flooded passage. He moves at a snail's pace unless you toss 500 points at him, in which case this will happen. Escort the quiet one to the flooded sewer. Oh, if you give it 500 bucks, it just starts sprinting. That's hilarious. Oh my god, and it runs. It runs like it should be wearing a helmet. That's adorable. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, so you, uh, you can give it $500 to run. There you go. Uh, but it only runs like a few seconds. Or oh, are they attacking it? Uh oh. Stop attacking my friend. Stick it down there. I'm not gonna make it in time. <laughs> Fireball. Once this absolute machine reaches the flooded passage, he'll receive a healthy dose of electroshock therapy, allowing us to drain the passage and collect the key. Drain the sewer passage. Acquire the chamber key. Alright. Look at us. For the final key, you'll need to find and shoot four experiments around the map all within two minutes. What are these experiments, you might ask? Well, it's these dudes who have little rat clocks inside them. Weird, but don't ask questions. Sure, gotcha. Oh, uh, there's one down here, right? Here we go. It's two. I guess if I keep running in a circle, I'm down to find the other ones, but... It's this way. I made it through. Oh, fuck. You're okay. good. Of course. It's in here. 
There's Very one first. more still. Yeah, there's one more. Oh. 15 seconds, I don't know where he is. Gotcha. Unfortunately. I don't know if I can make it back in time. No. It'll probably just restart. If you don't manage to get all four in the allotted time, the clock just resets and you have to start over. A pretty low risk, low consequence challenge, but admittedly, it did take like three times before I finally stumbled upon the last experiment. Oh, I found him. He's on the bridge. Shoot the purple shelled pod with the plague. I think that's just at the spawn. Here's where the misdirect is. You go back to the spawn thinking the pod is holding the final key, only for it to drop this and fucking king abomination. King of the rats. Eliminate the mutated rat. Fuck. That boss? I don't know. Maybe. Well, maybe like, a, ha maybe like, a, like half a halfway boss? Because we still need one more key. Oh, so yeah. I'm here, by the way. Alright, thank you. There we go. King of the rats defeated. Um, let me get the fuck out of here. As soon as I find the way out. To quote the great Billy Mays, but wait, there's more. See, we still need to unlock the chamber doors. Oh, and remember that generator task from the first map? Well, it's back here, only in a tighter, more confined area with more difficult enemies. Where are you, Mr. Hangman? There you are. There we go, ult for the win. Is that a max ammo? Out the fucking way? This was arguably the most difficult portion of the easter egg for me, and I'm honestly a little shocked that I suffered through this without dying. With the teleporter unlocked, all that's left to do is fight the stranger. In my opinion, he's the easiest boss of all the four maps. The hardest part with him is the fact that he'll start spawning in abominations to attack you while you shoot at him, but the stranger himself is basically just a giant bullet sponge. Aw, oh, that is... We are penalized for using shotguns, definitely. Is a cave. What's this? Oh shit. Where the fuck did he go? Every once in a while he'll disappear and you'll have to find and shoot a weird corpse thing that looks like Captain Keys when the flood gets to him. There's like catacombs down here too. Oh, I think I found him? Is this him down here? I don't know what the fuck that was. It's like a tumor I just killed. He's back, that's him right there. Shoot his eyes and don't go into the, into the color or into the light that he's shining around. He just disappeared again. Which I think that's when I have to kill the guy below. 
If you could just if you could just keep the uh, enemies occupied, honestly, I feel like I can do this. I think he's down here. I need a revive. Oh, okay. Go, 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 fuck yeah. Yep. Oh. oh, it's trippy. This is gonna get somebody seizures. Run. And now, on to the final map. Deadly Lover's Fortress. This one was both mine and Venom's favorite of the four maps. It reminded us a ton of Derizendrog from Black Ops 3, and I think many of you who've played that before can see why. The Wonder Weapon here is also just a massive greatsword, which is so badass. Deadly Lover's Fortress is, I think, the biggest map of the four. It certainly feels that way. So it's also got the most puzzles, and I'd argue they're the most complex of the maps. Though that isn't really saying much. These aren't overcomplicated puzzles by any means, but for dipshits like me, some of these took a considerable amount of time to work through. Right off the jump, you're thrown into a mini boss battle with Baylor. No better weapons, no lube, just a starter pistol. This is the coolest one out of them all so far. Already. It reminds me of Derizendrak. Oh yeah. Oh god, oh god, he's got a fucking mace or a sledgehammer thing. Hurry, we gotta kill him for triple point. Oh, he just... Oh, I'm just gone. Can I, can I get a Riz? Yeah, one sec. As a callback to the first map, you've got to destroy these generators again, which respawns Baylor, but he's different this time. He's green. Killing him allows you to finish destroying the power cells and head into the fortress. around him without just insta dying. I can. Yeah. It may have taken four maps to get here, but I finally discovered that the crossbow is, in fact, the greatest weapon in the game. It fires three bolts at a time, but only costs one ammo. If you headshot a boss, each bolt deals crit damage, meaning you can effectively dish out three times the damage you'd normally be doing if you hit your shots. That was wild. Alright, and now... Generator. And then destroy, continue to destroy the power. Oh, I found Pack. There's a few new enemy types here as well. For starters, you've got... It's the Wat Walkers. Oh no. And then frozen knights that launch ice at you. Easily my favorite enemies in the game. The design on them is just so cool. Oh, and you know how we had banshees in the past? Well, they're here, but now we've also got fucking ice ninjas who can dodge and teleport short distances. It makes this map feel almost like an entirely new game compared to the previous iterations. Anyway, once inside the fortress, you need to find these red jars of oil to smear onto the battering ram, which you can then use on the ice wall. Where'd you put it? I got a new miracle. Oh, you just smear oil on its face? Yeah, you take that. It's not the man to do this job. Where are you going, stupid? This way. Yeah, light this. 
Like that on fire. No, I I need I need to get it Night on fire with using... the. Oh, you gotta go fight Baylor. That's why I said I wasn't the man for this job because I'm I get well, lost. You do that. I'll hang out over here. Man. I ignited the flame. <laughs> the God, flame your of guy, hope. His, his left arm doesn't move. It's it's like at his side as he's running. <laughs> I like it. Just like I have places to be. I'd like to give a speech. I'd like to thank my fans Bruh. for being here. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Activate the battering ram. Are you using the battering ram? Oh, sorry. Here it goes! I would get out of the way. In all honesty, this was super underwhelming. I was expecting this big flaming battering ram to crash through the wall, and instead it just kind of gave it a little fire kiss and melted it with kindness. Bullshit. I was uh, fighting for my life. I barely saw it. I was waiting for it to just smash through. It does not smash through. That was weak stuff. Upon reaching the last door in the hallway, you're greeted with the true challenge of the map. Instead of collecting a cylinder, or a punch card, or keys, this time you need the heads of the slain bosses. Meaning this map has not one, not two, but seven separate boss fights if you include the first two against Baylor. So let's get started. First we have the mural. Now we may be grade A dipshits, but we did complete all of this without looking up a single thing, so I think that's worth mentioning. This puzzle's pretty simple admittedly. You just gotta turn all the pieces green. This can be done by finding these little buttons all across the map, so I did a few loops while Venom stayed back and stared at the slab. Is this like a matching game? You make the red... What if I do that? Red, Which one does that change? Upper right. Does it go red or, or green? Went green. Am I colorblind? Oh, that's yellow to me. That, that is green, stupid. Yeah, I struggle with colors, numbers, memorizing things, etc. I have known this man for 22 years. Fine. Venom the Sage, everyone. Yeah. After four rounds of searching for the final button, we finally uncovered the secret. It's fucking Abraham. Clone of Luckily, Abraham. I've been upgrading the crossbow, so boss battles were kind of just a breeze the entire time. Shit, I'm the real Abraham. Uh. Crossbow's the way to do this, god damn. God damn. Pop your potion. Yep. Killing the Amish tribe leader unlocks a massive Ooh, fucking sword that we took full advantage of. Fuck yeah. For the second boss, you've got to collect DNA samples from three test subjects, A, B, and C. To figure out which one is which, you'll need to find three chalkboards throughout the room and solve the puzzles on each one to determine the pattern and then match that up to each subject until you find the correct one. Now I'm not gonna lie, this completely fucked me up for like 20 minutes, if not longer. Mainly because I just couldn't find any of the chalkboards outside of B. Because, as we've established, trade Triangle a dipshit. Diamond. Okay, I, I found B. And it is a square, triangle, square, diamond. But the arrows are, swap, are swapped, so square, diamond, square, triangle. That's B. Oh, they're, okay. A is circle, diamond, circle, square scribbled out. Circle, diamond, circle, square scribbled out. Two. And we need C, which is 
Tri triangle, circle, square, diamond. Triangle, circle, square, diamond. Probably upstairs. Triangle, circle, square, diamond. Perfect. Alright, I'm on the last one. This is gonna summon another boss, too. After spending almost five full rounds trying to get my shit together, I finally collected all three samples, spawning in the King of the Rats. King of the Rats. We kited him out into the castle grounds and then just trained him around, slowly shredding his health away. A pretty easy fight, all things considered. Killing the Rat King opens up the teleporter, leading you to the third boss in the map. Now this was an entirely separate portion of the castle, and has little references to the labyrinth from the second map, along with the return of our friendly helmet-wearing quiet one. It's, oh, it's the same guy from the last map. He's already got the helmet on. That's hilarious. Using him and his two twin brothers, you'll need to escort them to these pressure plates, which allow you to take the blood of some of the prisoners. Power the platform. Collect blood from the chalice, okay. Okay. And how are you? Get blood out of you. There we go. Reach the Gates of the Damned. With that blood, you can open the Gates of the Damned, leading to the third boss battle against Baylor. I'm gonna be honest, this one had me sweating. Mainly because Venom had no fucking clue how to get to me, so I was pretty much screwed if I died here. Dead end. Oh, I am. Oh, the There we go. After defeating Baylor, all that's left is Isaac. I will admit, there's a whole side quest involving building a bomb and starting the Fallout series with the first nuke launch, but we didn't really get too much into it. In reality, I think it's a side quest to build a stronger, more upgraded greatsword. But we'd been playing for like 6 or 7 hours straight at this point and just wanted to go to bed, so we'll have to revisit this at a later point. You do have to restart the forge though, which summons Isaac. Hot take, Isaac is the hardest boss in Skur Ritual, at least at the time of recording. Both in his own map being the hotel, and then again in the final map as a clone. Isaac. 
with Isaac disposed of, we can place the four heads of these bosses into the slots on the locked door, opening up to reveal the final boss. I made the only person who could get close to her. You, Thomas. My father. That is a demon ghost bitch lady. Well said, Preds from the past. A demon bitch ghost lady indeed. Me explaining the entire battle won't do it justice, so just enjoy the show. It's worth noting that Venom's mic had essentially disintegrated at this point, so he's barely audible and the quality dips to a scratchy tone, making it difficult to communicate effectively. Just a fair warning. Alright, boss battle. Something tells me these guys just keep coming the whole time. Oh, I'm almost dead. Who the fuck is Thomas? There we go. What a fantastic experience this game is. I said it at the beginning, and I'll say it again now, this is the most fun I've had in a round-based game in years. It's one of the first games since BO3 Zombies to get me genuinely excited to replay all of the old maps. Like, one of these times where me and Venom were texting each other throughout the day to hop back on after recording this to replay the maps and try to figure out all the hidden easter eggs. It's a fantastic game, and it's about a third of the price of its competitors, so if you're missing that round-based experience, I can't recommend it enough. It's got its bugs and a few optimization issues, but honestly, it's one of my favorite games of 2024, and dare I say, the 2020s in general. Just a fantastic little game, loaded to the brim with content, and with a roadmap already in the works to lay out the future now that it's fully released. With that though, I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I appreciate you all. Stay safe, and thanks for stopping by. Thoughts of widespread, unexplained phenomena continue to rise after many were said to experience bizarre behaviors across the country last night. Those affected suffered from sudden and intense headaches, a loss of self, and a distinct lack of control of their own bodies. The public are being advised to remain calm but vigilant as local authorities. This is who you were, uh, who you are. And its possible connections with German strategy. You know the people's report. Now the nightmare is over. It's time for you, for us, to find a new life. <laughs>